beautiful for spacious skies for amber waves of grace for purple mountain majesties You remain standing they're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do the pledge of allegiance next i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. And now we're going to do the Star Spangled Banner this morning. Maxine's going to have it for us.
be seated. It's a uh, blessed morning to be here this morning. I'll go over the announcements. Um, following right after service today, there is a uh, free beef and noodle luncheon. It's provided by the uh, Women's Auxiliary. Um, we're thankful for that, and we appreciate them uh, doing that today. Uh, Monday, November 7th, there's quilting in the fellowship hall at noon. Wednesday night, regular kids club and youth group. Um, on Sunday, November 20th, following the 1030 service, we'll do our annual uh, Thanksgiving carry-in. Uh, meats and uh, drinks are provided, but uh, bring a small dish, or a side dish, sorry. Uh, still collecting the uh, shoe boxes. Uh, the, the collection, last collection date will be November 13th, so we're coming fast upon that. That's the next Sunday, so um, continue to get those in. I know we've seen more on the table. I have one myself that I happen to get all packed up. I forgot to bring this morning. And the last thing I was asked to uh, share with you is that uh, Tuesday, the 15th of November, from 11.30 to 12.30, they, uh, at the Waynesfield schools, are doing a free senior citizens luncheon. Um, if you uh, would like to attend, they want you to RSB the, uh, give a call into the uh, um, elementary school office uh, no later than November 8th. Um, they're going to have food, I guess, fun and entertainments from the students, and they would love for the uh, seniors to come out and uh, enjoy that day with them. We have some birthdays here. I have uh, one young lady that I told her I won't call her out and actually sing happy birthday, but I think you guys can uh, definitely... She might be hiding back there now. You can see her back there. You just when you get a chance, tell her happy birthday today. We won't sing to her, but you know we'll definitely make sure she she's known. There's many others there, um, and there's some we've had from last week. So if you see any of them, please uh, congratulate them on their special day. And uh, if you'll bow your heads, we'll pray over the offering. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings that you are still upon us. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us. We uh, come now to give back because we know that everything we have comes from you. And we are so great for everything that you provide. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon every household represented. And a special blessing upon this city, this country, and this nation. Lord, we ask all these things in your name. Jesus, amen. Now, we are blessed with uh, two songs this morning that we'll be saying, and uh, I think this little lady has touched my heart with the fact that she's so willing and wanting to step up and do this. I think it's great when the youth reaches out to us and wants to be involved in the service, so if there's any other youth that ever want to be involved, get with us, um, and I know myself, if I'm ever doing a service and you want to be involved, you got something you want to bring to share your talents with the Lord, we're all about it. We love the youth being involved in the service. Amen. All right, so with that, this, will you come and bless us with the song this morning? I'll go make sure they turn your, your TV on back there. You want to stand here? You want to stand here? You want to stand up there? Stand here? All right, there you go. I'll make sure they get you to put the TV on.
Amen. Thank you. What a blessing. What a blessing to have that. Um, I, I told her, I said, I I'll put you on before John. I don't want you to have to follow John because I wouldn't want to have to follow him if I had to sing. <laughs> but John's going to come now and bless us uh, with, with, with the song. And the girls are telling me they need assistance. John, would you just come up and kind of bless us? Just share a little bit about what the Lord's doing for you while I straighten them up. I'm going to tune them up. I, 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 I know he's retired, but he looked pretty good doing double time coming back up here during the offering. That, that does help. We all need it. Yeah, I think we could all use a little of that. I want to thank you, Alyssa, for that great song. And continue to sing. Continue to sing. Right? Right? Hey, um, my son is currently serving in the Armed Forces as a um, Air Force National Guard out of Springfield. Um, he just re-upped. Re uh, it's his second year of his second six-year term. Um, not sure what he does after that. I told him he's close to 20, so he needs to consider that. But I can't tell you... Have you ever stopped to think, like, you just get in your car and drive to church this morning... You get in your car, hopefully, if you haven't already, this coming Tuesday, to go and vote. Just seems like breathing to us, you know? I just get in my car. You know, until the pandemic hit, and now it seems like, and I can appreciate Ray's job considerably. My dad was a truck driver, but how much... We took for granted that there was always food on the shelves, and, and now you have to kind of, oh, look, it's there. I better grab some. Um, but I go on my daily life. We're retired. God has blessed us. We have grandchildren everywhere, and we, we send them. We go to our daughter's house in Nashville. We were just there a couple weeks ago. and I don't think nothing about just driving down the road not passing a security post like some other countries do. I can't tell you the people that in this room and the people that serve every day and this young man here what that means and what it should mean to all of you. The fact that I get a benefit from something that I really didn't have anything to do with protecting my freedom, you know. It's, it's, it's very similar to my salvation. Something that I greatly benefit from, from someone else's ultimate sacrifice, and that's Jesus. And I hope today that, that you know him the way I know him. And I just want to thank our veterans, those of you that are here or not here. Uh, those of you who may be listening, how much we need to remember what we take for granted every day that those before us and those that stand ahead of us now do every day to sacrifice for their families. And it's for our freedom and their families' freedoms. And it's such a blessing. And I, I love this song. I Hopefully I can do it justice. Are we, are we ready? Did you tune them up enough? Okay, let's try this. They said, never, we never played a CD. I'm like, oh. <laughs> they know what one is, right? Yes, they do know what one is. Okay. <laughs> They're so young enough that. They so we'd be better off with this. If I showed you this, you'd know what that is, right? Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. If tomorrow all the things I want would work for all my life And I had to start again with just my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars to be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom and you can't take that away An American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today, cause there ain't no doubt I love this land, God bless. 
up to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston, and New York to L.A., where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Thank you, John. Before you're seated, go ahead and say good morning and shake hands and whatever, fist bump, whatever you feel comfortable doing this morning. Corbin. <laughs> and I have to tell you, for being a little guy, he has a firm hand grip already. So I think Grandpa's taught him well. Amen. Um, I love that song, and it, it, it means so much more to me now after being in the service and everything than it did when I was a kid, but wow. I, I'm excited and happy to be up here and do this, but uh, I'd be remiss to tell you, church, I didn't want to be here today. I didn't want to be standing here. You all probably realize it. It's one year from when we lost Pastor Don. And I made the, 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 the comment a long time ago, Tom and him, I said, oh, I hope I'm not preaching that day. But the good Lord put me here today, and he put a Veterans Day. So the right thing to do is to uh, put together this service and hopefully do a decent job because Pastor Don loved this holiday. He loved a lot of holidays, but he was very supportive of his country, of his military. And he would tell you, he was happy. I know many times different ones he uh, had him speak at the different cemeteries on Memorial Day and different things um, but I thank God I was privileged to have that honor at, at times for him and I thank God that when we started coming here and we, we talked about a Veterans Day program that he was like let's do it you guys got some stuff you've done before me my daddy said show me what you got and we started going with it and he loved it and I hope you guys uh, love it each year I know um, Last year was pretty phenomenal for me with doing the flag folding. Um, presenting that to your, your, your guys' grandfather, that, that was outstanding. I wish he was here today again so we could, you know, see him again. But we know where he's at. We know he's up there with Don and they're just having a time today. Amen. So bear with me. I'm going I'm to try to do a little bit here. I went back and forth and I thought, well, we'll just do the same thing we did last year and hope that it, it touches like it did. Because, um, like I said, I... I I got extra nerves today that I don't normally have, but we'll get through it. So today's our Veterans Day service. We want to honor all nations, veterans, especially those veterans who are here with us today. 
To the veterans, we owe a debt of gratitude because they were willing to go to serve and to give on behalf of the United States of America. May God bless you for your sacrifice. Webster's Dictionary says that a veteran is a person who has served in the military force, or it also says someone that is uh, at service or experience in an occupational office. But we're talking about the military source this morning. In John 15, 12 and 13, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And every veteran that ever raised their hand and took that oath, that's what they did. They signed with their hand in the air, stating, I would give up to that cost if it need be. I will give up to laying down my life. And a lot of times you think about that. I know I've told a story and I'll tell it again. My dad asked me, he said, can you do that? When you join the military, when I talked about wanting to join it, can you do that? Are you willing to give your life for your country? Are you willing to go and fight potentially on another soil and give your life for a country that may not be totally happier there because of different things? Can you do that, son? I was like, wow, that's a lot to ask, Pop. Let me get back to you. But no, I told him real quick, yes, I can do that. I was a proud man. I was glad to be able to serve my country. I was glad to be able to do it for 20 years and retire. It's a privilege. And it is a volunteer service that we have. So everyone that lists in the military, that's volunteer. They weren't forced to. You know, you, you have other countries out there. When they hit the age of 18, they're required by the law in their country to serve two to four years in the military. We don't have that here. It's all a voluntary service. It's the veteran, not the reporter, who has given us the freedom of press. It's the veteran, not the poet, who has given us freedom of speech. It's the veteran, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to assemble. It is the veteran, not the lawyer, who has given us the right to a fair trial. It is the veteran, not the politician, who has given us the right to vote. It's the veteran who salutes the flag and who serves under the flag. Amen? Sometimes I think people in certain offices around the world forget some of those things at times. I mean, we are a blessed nation that we have. The fact that I can stand here today and say, amen, praise Jesus, that's all a blessing that our veterans pay. Other countries, they can't do that. They don't have the, the free freedom of their religion to, to meet and come with that without worrying about hiding doing it in different things because their country may uh, grab them up and get rid of them or put them in jail or different things of that nature. I mean, it, it hurts me a lot of times. I see a lot of different people that get confused and, you know, they badmouth our military or they badmouth this or badmouth that about our country. And Lord, heaven forbid, I've seen our flag burned on our own soil. That one there, that, that, that brings out an old me before I was saved that just wants to do some things that, thank God I'm not that man anymore. In another country, you couldn't do that. So as much as it hurts me, I look at them and go, you're welcome. The fact that you can even stand there and do that, you're welcome. I pray you don't do stuff like that. It hurts me that you do stuff like that. But you're welcome that you at least have that opportunity. Today, I want to use two symbols that you see here before you to bring out this message. The American flag and the cross. One represents our country and the other represents what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us. To serve under either of these symbols and what they represent, one must meet certain requirements. And I'm just going to lay out a few today for you. First requirement is to volunteer. To serve under the American flag or the cross, one must do so voluntarily. We're asked, military people are asked to volunteer to serve. Recruitment, office, recruitment officers are sent out to encourage people to volunteer to serve in the military but it's still a voluntary service. It's a commitment that each individual person has to choose and make. And one of the greatest things that I, I enjoyed when, when I take the oath of enlistment, the very last thing it says, so help me God. I always thought that was so neat that that is at the very end of our enlistment because 
you're making that commitment. The same God does not force, the same God does not force anyone to serve in the service of his kingdom, but he does plead for us to volunteer and come to the salvation he has laid out for our lives through what Christ did for us on the cross. God also sends out recruitment officers to urge his people to serve in his army. Church, that's us. That's our job. We're the Lord's recruitment officers. It's our job to go out and tell of the good things, to tell of what Jesus did on the cross, to save a lost and dying world. And I don't know if y'all you, but if you look out there, this world is lost and dying and we need to get busy. Amen? We need to get busy. I know we're, we're already talking about different things and, you know, as we've been in interviews as the pulpit committee with these different pastors, we've asked, well, what are, your, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on that? And we're praying that when we have the next person, that we have a, a, a person that comes in and the outreach is, is a big thing that they'll want to help us with. But it takes us. We can stand up here the same way a commanding officer can stand in front of his troops and say, go, do that. If the troops don't march and go, nothing happens. Amen? Mark 16, 15. And he said unto them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, that's us, church. That's our, that's our job. To get out there and do it. And I know a lot of us do. A lot of us, just by your, you, your stand on saying that I'm a Christian and your walk and people watching you, you're doing that. You may not directly have the confidence or may not have the opportunity to, to speak to somebody yet. Keep praying about it. The Lord will bring it to you. But people are watching us. People are watching you as a Christian to see when the rubber meets the road, do you line up with what you say? Or do you falter and become the world? Are you the church or are you the world? We can't be both. The Bible tells us we can't be both. So I pray, and I know in this church, we are the church. And I pray that as new people come in, they get that feeling. They get that feeling of family and they can march on. Second uh, requirement I want to talk about is complete faith. When you serve under the American flag, you must have faith in the American government that it will supply your every need. Your food, your clothing, your shelter, medical needs. Sometimes, uh, you know, you, you, not to get into politics, but you see different leaders and you question why did they make the choices they made? Why did they, you know, cut our military or why they do that? You as a person start to do that. You as a military person in the military, you start to think, well, why are you cutting my numbers? It's above my head. I don't see all that stuff or why, why it was. But you still have to have faith. That's why John brought up voting. That's a very important thing that we have. That is your say as an American citizen of who gets in the office. Because that's our job. That's what we're called to do. And I know sometimes I feel these, these, these politicians that get into office, they seem to miss the point of who put them there. And they have their own agendas and everything that they're pushing. I'm not going to go any further into that, but I, it bothers me sometimes. I grew up in a time where your word meant your bond. If you said you were going to do something, you did it. I know a lot of people still instill that in their kids. I try to tell that in my daughter that your word is your bond. Don't lie. Don't do it. Truth always comes out. And a lot of times when you lie, you got to tell five, six, seven, eight more lies just to cover up the first one you told. And it's a vicious cycle that you get tied into. So we have to be careful with that. When you serve under the cross, you must also have faith in the one who has called you into his service that he will supply your every need. You will not have to worry about your physical needs when you serve Jesus Christ. It's a hard one at times. We go through things and we don't understand why did I have to go through what I went through? Why did we have to go through that? Why, why am I seeing this person over here seeming like they got everything in the world and I'm struggling to, to go to McDonald's and get me a chicken sandwich? Kind of think, why, why, why? But I just pray and hope that I have the faith that no matter what I go through, I'm going to give glory to God. Because he's going to bring me through anything and everything that happens. Amen? You've heard me say it before and I'll say it again. 
I try to keep the mindset that whatever I go through, let it be a, if it's hardships, let it be somebody see me as I go through that and let it be a blessing to them to know and give, and I want to give glory to God as I'm going through it. It's hard at times because you get in that valley. But I want to give glory to God while I'm doing it because I want people to see it's God's the reason I'm coming out of that struggle. I may have got put into it, but God is the reason and, and what is going to pull me through. And that faith is undying. Matthew 6, 31 through 33. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all, th all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you knows you. You need all of all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. Our testimony, church, you go through things, that's your testimony. There is so much power in your testimony. I pray that you're never afraid to share it with people, because you just don't know by sharing your testimony how you can touch other people's lives. I've seen it over and over again people struggling with things and somebody gives their testimony and walls break and people finally give in and hit their knees and pray to God to help them through and they finally get relief of the bondage and everything that was under them because someone was able to stand and give them hope and share it with them and that person goes I'm not alone all the lies the devil's tried to tell me of where I'm at and where I'm stuck are not true that person right there going through it they've been through it Jesus brought them through it they can bring me through it that's our testimony. That's what we can do for people. Amen? Third requirement, complete commitment. When you serve under the American flag, you're expected to be completely committed to your country and allow nothing to prevent you performing your duties and serving faithfully. When you serve under the cross, you're also expected to be completely committed to Christ and his kingdom. You're expected to serve him faithfully, not allowing anything to keep you from doing his will. Ephesians 6, 10, and 13, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities, <clears throat> sorry, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done so, all to stand. Austin preached about that this morning and it just hit me. I forgot that that was in my message. But that just shows me how the good Lord ties things together. That was, he, he preached the 830 service this morning. I didn't get a chance to make it here. I told him, I said, well, I thought about coming, but I didn't want to like, get you nervous or anything. I said, so I'll have to come the next time when you're a little bit more, make sure you're comfortable. I think that young man's going to have a, a bright future with some things. And I'm thanking God that he stood up and did that this morning. And I'm praying that he continues to uh, allow God to use him in his life because I think he will be a good witness for the Lord. I mean, he already is. We all have seen the different things that he's done where he's witnessed. And we've heard the stories about how he's helped other friends at school and different stuff at times. Mom and Dad, you're doing a good job. Grandma and Grandpa aren't here, but they did a good job too. Keep doing it. Church, we did a good job. I know a lot of you have poured into that young man over the years because he's been in this church. Keep doing it. That's our job, to bring these young ones up. Give them encouragement. Help them. The last requirement I want to talk to you about is complete obedience. When you serve under the American flag, you're required to follow orders and are expected to be obedient to the letter. When you serve under the cross, Christ expects and requires no less. Deuteronomy 11.1 1, Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments, always. It says always. Doesn't say only on Sunday. Doesn't say only on Monday when I feel like it. It said always. We've got to keep that in mind at times. And thank God when my always isn't enough, he made a way for me to say, I'm sorry I failed by putting Jesus on the cross. So when I'm not good enough to have my always, he still is there. To bring me through. And I can ask for forgiveness when I mess up. I'll close out with uh, something I put together. In the Air Force, we have the, Air, the uh, Airman's Creed. And I come up with uh, what I consider to be a Christian's creed. So the Air Force Creed goes as, I'm an American Airman. 
I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I'm an American airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and win. I am faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor and legacy of valor. I'm an American airman, guardian of freedom and justice. My nation's sword and shield is century and avenger. I defend my country with my life. I'm an American airman, wingman, leader, warrior. I will never leave an airman behind. I will never falter, and I will never fail. The Christian creed, as I have put on here and called. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I am blessed to be saved. I have a father who loves me and a brother who saves me. I am a Christian. I'm a child of God. I have made a choice to serve. I put on my armor, a helmet of salvation, a breastplate of righteousness, a belt of truth, a shield of faith, shoes of peace, and a sword of God's word. I am a Christian. I'm a child of God. My father has set up a mansion in glory. My brother has paid the ultimate price, died for my sins, to provide eternal life for me. I am a Christian. I am a child of God. A judgment awaits me one day. But thankfully, Jesus is on my side. If you'll bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for this day. I just pray and hope that the message I brought forth was pleasing to you. I hope that everyone out here got something from it, encouraged. And Lord, I just thank you for every blessing that you give us. I ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. Now, uh, girls, if you'll turn the, the screens back on for us, we're going to play the uh, different armed forces uh, anthems. And as your anthem comes on, we're going to ask that you stand up. They'll get it going for us here in a second.
have an anthem but if you served in any type of law enforcement firefighters or uh, EMS I would ask you to stand we want to honor you today as well because you guys were a service to our country as well all right the girls will get the uh, tap stuff queued up here in a second but before we do that I'm gonna ask if everyone would just take a moment of silence Amen. Go ahead, girls, play it, please.
get ready to uh, close out this service today I uh, want to again say thank you to our veterans and ask that you continue to pray for them continue to pray for our current military members as they go into uncharted territories we don't know what will be in our future I know I always prayed that if there's war to come let it be during my time so my kids don't have to I can't promise that won't be the case but I'm thankful that we have men and women that will enlist and we'll go out there and fight for our freedoms. So uh, girls, if you'll come get ready to get the flags, and then Troy, after we head out, if you'll uh, take the mic and close out, uh, closing prayer for us. And uh, girls in the sound booth, as soon as we pass with the flags, you can cut the music, okay?